What does PDIV and PDEV stand for? Well, PDIV means partial discharge inception voltage. And that's literally the voltage where the partial discharge starts. So I'll give you an example. Let's talk about one source. Let's say a service discharge. Uh, we have videos about that. But a service discharge, a certain phenomenon, a certain setup, let's say starts at 10 kV. I could have used a different number, but let's say 10 kV. And then we know what is the PD IV, the partial discharge inception voltage for that, it's 10 kV. And the PD EV, the partial discharge extinction voltage, is the voltage level where it stops. So they're not the same. And it, by the way, uh, extinction voltage doesn't mean when it starts to become a flash over, but extinction voltage means if you turn down the voltage again, at what level, voltage level does it stop? So they aren't the same. No, they are not. So let me give you a real life example for that. Example given, I'm walking down the street and there is um, it's, it's a house with a front yard and there's a dog inside, a watchdog. And let's say between me and uh, the front yard, it's uh, like the fence of the front yard, let's say there's 20 meters in between, right? Nothing happens, I keep on walking. Now it's 15 meters between me and the fence, nothing happens. It's 10 meters between me and the fence. Ah, the dog takes notice of me, but it doesn't bark yet. And now it's like eight meters. And suddenly the dog starts barking. So this is like the barking inception distance. At eight meters, the dog starts barking, right? So I still want to walk by, right? So I'm, I'm closing the distance. It's, it's four meters, it's three meters, it's two meters because I'm walking by, right? And we remember the barking inception distance was eight meters. So now I keep on walking and I have seven meters between me and the, and the, and the fence and eight meters and this dog still starts, uh, still keeps barking. So it doesn't stop barking. And even if I'm stepping back further, so it's nine meters, it's still barking. I'm stepping back 10 meters, the dog is still barking. So I literally have to walk further, let's say 14 meters and then the dog finally stops barking. So the barking inception distance was eight meters and the barking extension distance was 14 meters, example given, right? So there are different values. So as a matter of fact, there's a hysteresis in there. And the majority of our partial discharge phenomena have that as well, just the other way around. Um, so let me sketch this on the board. So let's use the easiest diagram we have for that, a trend diagram. There's a video for that. So um, the diagram here on this axis, we have the voltage in kV. So obviously we have 5 kV, 10, 15, maybe around 20 over here. And here we're having our charge the charge, the, the magnitude um, of the partial discharges we have. This is Q, it is measured in picocoulomb. And now let's say, because I'm lazy, I'm going to use uh, this graph here in logarithmic view. Why not linear? Well, if I'm doing it linear, I should have an idea where I'm ending up with. If I'm doing logarithmic, it's like, oh, I can cover everything from like zero PC to a nanocoulomb or five nanocoulombs. I can see everything at once. And uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not so much afraid that I'm missing something. So let's say this is um, 10 PC here, logarithmic, then this would be 100 and this would probably be 1000 PC. And so I have pretty much everything covered and I'm starting with zero. And um, so that's good. So let's say I'm having, I don't know, background noise of let's say 5 PC because I'm in a fairly good laboratory and um, I'm going to have a corona. So I'm going to start increasing the voltage. So I'm starting around here because it's around 5 PC background noise and I'm having a corona and nothing happens. So I'm turning the knob, but nothing really happens. And now let's say at around this point, my corona starts and it starts. And now I have a corona, I can see it on my screen. It's really awesome. And I'm like, okay, I don't have to increase it further more because if you do this too much, there's actually another effect that can happen. And there's a video for that. Uh, but um, let's stop it for here. And now I say, okay, I have my inception voltage. This is where my partial discharge started. So where is it? Well, it's probably, it's, it's around nine, piece, uh, 9 kV. It's not eight, but it's around nine kV. That's awesome. I have my inception voltage for my corona. And now I'm turning back the knob. This wasn't supposed to decline. It should have been more or less the same level, right? And now I'm gonna go back and According to uh, a standard or to a paper, uh, it's a pretty old one, it's like 20 or 30 years old, it actually says that the corona doesn't have a hysteresis, so the inception voltage and extinction voltage is almost the same. However, if you do it yourself, you will realize it's not, there's a small gap in between there. So what is going to happen is my extinction voltage will be something like that. 
so I now have just the noise floor again, right? So in my experiences in laboratories, the hysteresis, the difference between extinction voltage and exception voltage, um, inception voltage and extinction voltage, sorry, is always around 500 volts, more or less. Fi as funny side fact, if you use a ventilator, if you use a fan, and you dr uh, blow a lot of wind on that, you will actually realize that the inception voltage and extinction voltage are getting much closer to each other because you do not have any ionized air in front of the needle tip anymore and uh, you blow that away and then these things become closer or get closer to each other. So do I have already determined my inception voltage, my extinction voltage? Let's say this is 8.5 kV. Well, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't rely on that. I will probably do uh, three repetitions or something like that. So I'm going to start here again. I'm going to go up and I'm getting a slightly different value. And now it actually sometimes even goes a little bit higher. And then I say, okay, I'm going to go back with my voltage and um, I'm getting something like this. You understand what I'm doing, right? Do this three times, takes the mean of that. And that's pretty much it. And then you have determined what your inception voltage and your extinction voltage is, more or less. Why is it so important? Well, um, very often, if, if I tell, you know, hey, buddy, we got partial discharge on this device, the, very often the answer is not, oh, I'm really happy about it. It's like, darn, um, how much and when does it start? So it's really important. At what voltage level does it start? Why? Well, it's really important if the, if the standard defines, okay, this, this device shall not have any partial discharges up to this value, and your partial discharge starts much above that, you are safe, right? It passed the test. If it's much below, you have a problem. If it is much below um, operating voltage, then you have a real problem. Meaning, as soon as you put this into service, it will have partial discharges. And this is not a good thing to start with. Okay, uh, let's imagine we have a service discharge now. So, service discharge, different colors. I'm going to uh, do this an hour later. So, my background noise has changed a little bit. Um, just so I don't draw on the blue line. And um, this is my background noise a couple of, couple of hours later. And now at around here, bam, my service discharge goes up. By the way, if you keep increasing the voltage, usually the, uh, the, the, the discharges uh, increase as well. Maybe in the logarithmic view, maybe this is a little bit too much. Maybe it doesn't increase so much. Um, maybe it's more like that. The reason is, if you increase the voltage, the discharges get longer and longer. And the longer they are, the more electrons are involved in that. The more electrons, the bigger the Q, right? The bigger the charge. So it's going to be probably something like that. And now you want to know, okay, what is my extinction voltage, right? So you do the same thing. You go backwards. Sometimes you got these little bit of changes. Um, and then you realize, oh, isn't that interesting? My hysteresis, the difference between my inception voltage and my extinction voltage on a surface discharge is much bigger. Isn't that awesome? Uh, the interesting thing is depending on the material you have the, partial, uh, the surface discharge on, um, it destroys the material quite fast and sometimes even carbonates it depending on what you have, right? So uh, it is not uncommon that if you play this game for a longer time, your inception voltage might get smaller and smaller because uh, the destruction of the material already happens, depending on what you have. So once again, same game, right? What is my inception voltage? Well, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go up. I got this one. I'm going to go down. And I do this two or three times just to get the means in order to have a, a proper answer. And um, well, so it doesn't get boring. You probably understand uh, where we are heading at. Uh, let's say we're talking about a void. Same thing. Um, now it's, uh, it's in the evening. I have, a, I have a much lower background noise because nobody is working. And my background noise is only like two picocoulomb. And uh, I do that. And now suddenly my void starts. And this is fairly... For voids, if you only have a single void, very often if you're measuring something, you have multiple voids in there. But let's say you have a single void in a solid insulation system. Very often, even though if you increase the voltage, the discharge value doesn't really change so much. The repetition rate changes, 
but the discharge value doesn't change so much because it's always the same gap. It's always the same capacitor that is being bridged. So very often you find a fairly straight curve um, concerning uh, the discharge value, right? It doesn't change so much. If you would have multiple ones, what could happen is actually that you go another one. But now you just triggered a second void. I mean, a lot of simplifications here, right? But let's just imagine this here is void 1 and this here is void 2. You just didn't know it better when you started. I mean, very often we do partial discharge measurement because we don't know, right? So, and now, same thing here. Um, you're going to reduce the voltage again. Okay, we have an hysteresis again. Oh, we're having a bigger hysteresis here. Whoa, look, look at that. Ah, well, maybe the drawing should have been like that, right? Or maybe it's even a straighter line depending on how you, how you want to perceive the world. Um, look, the hysteresis here is smaller and here it is bigger. Obviously, we're going to do the same thing again. Funny story, if you do not wait long enough, um, your inception voltage might get smaller. Your extinction voltage very often stays the same in case you have not destroyed um, the solid insulation system again. So if you, if you do not wait long enough, and wait long enough, that's a really uh, interesting question. What does it mean? It could be a couple of seconds, could be a couple of minutes. But if you do not wait long enough and immediately turn the knob again, you might get an inception voltage which is suddenly here. So wait a little bit. So my suggestion, if you're ever going to do that, if you're staying here, wait a minute or wait two minutes and then you go up in order to determine the inception voltage again and the inception voltage again and then you go down in order to get the extinction voltage again. So that's pretty much it. Inception voltage, extinction voltage. Why is it important? There's another video about that. Here we go. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.